Good morning, buenos dias. I am so happy to be with you today, and we're going to read and study chapter 17 of the book of Acts. And I want you to read for tomorrow, chapter 18. Have you ever seen the book of 1 Thessalonians and 2 Thessalonians in the New Testament? That's written to a church that was started by Paul and Silas and their team on the second missionary journey of Paul. And this is in Greece. They've been in Philippi in Macedonia. Now they're moving a little south to, Thess uh, to Thessalonica. And here's the way it happened. They have left Silas. By the way, when they were in that prison and got beat, uh, and then the next morning they were found that the cell was empty. Did you know the magistrates there uh, said, get them out of town, get them out of t uh, uh, town. And Paul said, no, I'm a citizen. You beat a citizen. You didn't know I was a citizen. He used his citizenship at times to lighten the load of persecution when he could. And they got nervous in in uh, Philippi and went, whoa, we didn't know because you weren't allowed to beat a citizen like that. So um, uh, now he's into Thessalonica. There was a synagogue. As was his custom, Paul went to the synagogue on three Sabbath days. So three Sabbath day means at least three weeks, okay? He reasoned with them from the scriptures, explaining and proving that the Messiah had to suffer and rise from the dead. This Jesus, quote, I am proclaiming to you as the Messiah, he said. Some of the Jews were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas, as did a large number of God-fearing Greeks and quite a few prominent women. But other Jews were jealous, so they rounded up some bad characters from the marketplace, formed a mob, and started a riot in the city. And they rushed to the house of one of the believers where they think Paul is, and Paul's not there, fortunately. And they hassled the Christians who were there, but Paul and Silas hit the road and get out. What's interesting thing here is some commentators think that they were just there for three weeks or a month. No one thinks they were there for more than three months. How did they start a church that they could write to with leaders if you're only in a place a month to three months? I mean, how do they do that with no New Testaments to leave? No daily devotionals that they could take. Amazing, right? So from Thessalonica, they move on to Berea, where the people are more noble. By the way, did you notice this in Thess Thessalonica? Some believe, some don't. That's the way it always is. There was this power evangelism fantasy teaching going on in the 90s, I think it was, that if God is really with you and you go to a city, everyone gets converted. I mean, people must have not been reading their Bible. That didn't happen to Paul. And trust me, none of us are Paul. No, not only was there division, there was a riot. There was a revival, some got saved, and a riot happening in the city at the same time. This is what happens when God begins to work. There's blessing and anointing and life and salvation, but the devil stirs up all kinds of stuff. John Wesley said that in certain places where his preaching took hold, the great founder of Methodism in the 1700s, he said, but at the same time, God was saving people and they were falling in the mud and, and, and weeping and crying where they almost drowned out my voice. He was doing open air field preaching. He said it also felt like that the insane asylum had opened up and they just threw everybody in there out there. People were just disturbing, acting crazy, revival and riots. That was unfortunate. That, that's what accompanies the ministry of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we don't have to be uh, afraid of it. So they got out of Thessalonica and they went to Athens in, 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 in the Greece, the famous city. And there Paul debated with the philosophers, the Stoics, you can read about it there, and the Epicureans. And he told them about Jesus and the resurrection. 
And when they heard him teaching, they said, wait a minute. Because these philosophers in Athens, they were given to just death by philosophy. So they would just meet to hear what any new teaching. So they gathered at a famous meeting place, and Paul preached a sermon. Now notice how he started this sermon. Paul stood up and said, people of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. He didn't say you have the truth, but you're very religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, to an unknown God. So you are ignorant of this very thing of you worship, and this is what I'm going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. From one man he made all nations, verse 26. That means we're all related. And he preaches there in, in Athens. And the response isn't as great in terms of converts as it was elsewhere, as you read that. Few people believe. It's the way it happens. No one's ever figured that out. Some of the greatest ministers, male and female, have ever served God. They go one place, God really blesses. Other places, they struggle. Why? No say. I don't know. This is not formulaic. This is the wind is blowing. But I want you to notice that he met them where they were at. When he was in Thessalonica and the other places, he went to a synagogue because he was Jewish, and he started there. And when he spoke in Antioch and Pisidia, he said, okay, let's, let's talk about our history. And from the Jewish scriptures, he led them to the Messiah. Here in Athens, these Greeks, they didn't know Abraham from a ham sandwich. So he started with, wow, you all are really religious. You got like a thousand idols in your town, in your city. By the way, I saw one to an unknown God. You worship a God, you don't even know who he is. What's that about? Ah, oh, but I'll use that as an entree to you. I want to proclaim this God to you. He's the true God who made heaven and earth. And then he leads them to the message about the Messiah. You'll notice here that Paul was very wise in his way of ministry. You can have zeal, but without wisdom and love and carefulness, you can destroy more than you build up. You know, going up to someone in a subway saying, God loves you, but you're going to go to hell if you don't change. That usually is not the best way to convert someone. Who are they? What are they going through? What do they understand? When you say the word God, what do they even think of? We have a harder day. Can I say that in, in parting today? We have a harder um, task in one way because they didn't know the name of Jesus. When he talked about Jesus in Athens, they were like, what? Jesus? Who's Jesus? What's Jesus? Now, the whole society knows the name of Jesus, twisted views of him, and they use him in curses. So now we have to, with wisdom that only comes from God, unravel all of that and tell them who the real Jesus is. Or people who grew up in a church that had false teaching. Or people who grew up under Jehovah Witnesses or Mormons. Even the cults. But God says, James, chapter one, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. God's gonna give us wisdom today. Let's not be bulls in china shops. Let, let's be loving, caring, bold, courageous, but wise servants of the Most High. God bless you.